I'm on the phone with Dr. Dave Hoag, design manager at Google. Good morning, your time, Dave, and thanks for agreeing to the interview. Uh, thank you, Bill. Good morning to you also. Today's topic is web professional trends for 2014. Dave, you're an experienced web professional um, design expert. Can you look into the crystal ball and share with the subscribers of this podcast, what are the trends for 2014? Sure, I, I think, and I'll talk about this. I think more from a user experience perspective. Um, you know, when we talk about design on the web, there are a lot of of different aspects to design. Um, at the interface level, visual design, interaction design, micro interactions. At a larger level, user experience and and the emotional reactions that people have. And then larger yet, we can get into the into the area of service design and how experiences will cross channel. Um, how something that begins on the web and moves to a to a mobile device and then has a personal contact, uh, you know, telephone or chat or live or something like that, and then uh, rebounds around all of these different channels. Uh, so design actually is is a very broad field, and I think that's that's one of the trends that we're seeing is, is this recognition that it's not just the interface design. It's not whether or not we make the button blue or green, um, and it's not just the, you know, a, a selection of, of font face, uh, or whether or not we've got the easing on our motion design uh, just right. It's how all of it fit together to create a more holistic experience. Um, and some of them are digital, and some of them are personal. Uh, and I think that recognition is changing the, the scope, the way and, and the scale, the way that people think about how they're approaching their design tasks. I think some of the other trends um, that, that we're seeing, uh, just to, to give you a little bit of background, I'm an applied psychologist uh, by training, and I was a full-time faculty member um, in, a, in a psychology department at a university for a number of years before switching over into the, the UX design field. Um, and I've been practicing uh, in the field now for about 15 years. Uh, and and I got into the field because I noticed that there were a lot of, uh, and this would have been in the late 90s, there were a lot of very poor experiences on the Internet. Uh, and, and there were very few psychologists who were bringing their skills um, in terms of understanding how people think and learn and, and the emotional reactions that people have. Uh, to, to the design process, uh, and I think a lot of the early interfaces were just about getting the basic information out there and not really designed around how people's brains work and how they think about things. So I switched over into UX and, and left full-time academia. I still teach as an adjunct faculty member uh, and moved into the design field and, and said for years we need more psychologists, we need more psychologists. And you've probably noticed now in the past year or so there has been a, a sudden surge in awareness of the role of psychology in user experience design and a whole new crop of of professionals are entering the field who have been trained as psychologists and who are writing about the role of psychology in design. Um, and I think at this point it's still a, a relatively, I don't want to say simple, but it, it is, some of it is relatively low-level psychological concepts. Um, people are taking basic things and applying them to web design, and that's exactly how we expect it to start. You know, you start with the with the most applicable and easy to use theories and research, uh, and then it becomes more complex as people start to to study it and and apply it in more difficult, uh, you know, design challenges. Uh, and and so I, I, we see a, a broad range of psychological information out there where where people will be talking about. Uh, you know, color and emotion, uh, or they'll be talking about social behavior and mobile devices. And I think it's going to be a number of years before we start to get what we might call uh, a, a psychology of, of our digital lives. Uh, we're just really starting to research how are, are people really interacting and, and learning and remembering and feeling in these digital environments. And I think it's awesome. I, I think it's a, a, a trend that is is has started in the in the past year or two uh, to really become aware and is only going to grow. Uh, it, it's just going to attract more and more research and, and more people thinking this way. Uh, and so I think not just for 2014, but for 2014 and beyond, the role of psychology is going to be something uh, that's important. 
as well. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. And that's very insightful, and I appreciate that because that lends itself to the topic of design and pixels matter, right? I mean, mm-hmm. as a professional organization, we've been advocating on behalf of the role of the designer and the developer, and of course, the web business professional as well. But this really is a trend that defines and strengthens the role of the designer, in my opinion, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I think that there's also a growing awareness that designers. Um, you know, it's funny. I've gotten, I've had several conversations with people over the past few months um, uh, about, and I, I don't want to go down a rabbit hole here about design and art, um, and that there is a difference between them. Uh, that designers are problem solvers. Um, that that we are we're faced with a challenge. You know, people are trying to do something that they are either not able to do or not able to do easily, and it's our job to find solutions to find ways to help people accomplish things more effectively Uh, and it might be a task you know how do I better work with a spreadsheet or how do I better file a form online or something like that Um, but it could just as easily be a creativity task or a generativity task how do I how do I create an app that allows people to better express their musical you know ideas uh, or or how do i help them you know improve their photos or or sketch better whatever it happens to be designers are are faced with with challenges with problems to be solved and and if we have a good solution the design is successful if we have a bad solution well the design is not and it, and it's our job to go back and try again uh, and so when we're talking about, you know, designing for, for pixels, uh, designing for screens type of thing, I think it's really easy for a lot of people to suddenly become mired in, in just the visual aspect of design. Uh, and I think that, that the awareness of the developers and product managers and designers and now growing up into what we would call, you know, the executive branch and the C-suite uh, where the role of design in successful organizations has really become obvious. I mean, you take a look at a company like Apple, who has placed design at the core of their process, and, and they define design as how things work, uh, which is essentially you know, solving problems for the end user, and it really reframes the way that you think about design. It's not just, is the logo pretty or is the logo big enough? Um, it, it is what problem have we solved for our user and is it an effective solution for them? Very well stated as, as advocates of defining what these roles are. I mean, obviously they're moving and morphing and in some ways there's overlap between all of the things that we do today as web professionals. But uh, advocating on behalf of teaching these topics is something that I'm most passionate about. So yeah. I sit on 30-plus advisory boards, and most of those advisory boards are computer science centric both at the university and at the uh, community college level right and I always advocate on behalf of bringing in the various departments that consist of the web as we know it today right we mm-hmm. we need the we need the design uh, we need the business and oftentimes there's a silo effect in these environments where Design is just manipulating, as you said, right. making a blue logo, right? Right. Well, what you articulated very well really supports what I've been advocating on behalf of for years, and that is design is a lot more complex. These are individuals that really solve business problems, and I think it's time for designers to get recognized for the skill set that they bring and the creativity. Right. You know, yeah. the kids are screaming for this kind of support. Unfortunately, it's their teachers oftentimes that are in this environment where they don't understand it, and uh, that's what we need to fix. And so the art design department sit down with the business and the computer science folks and say, hey, can we just determine what the core objectives are and yeah. all work towards that goal rather than fighting each other yeah. out yeah. in terms you know, of the students? I, I recently was, was speaking with some faculty member about, basically about their their approach to to teaching UX and information and interaction design uh, yeah. and I was really kind of stunned um, a lot of the faculty members have a, a print background yeah right they're, exactly and they're still teaching it I mean which is fine I, I mean print is still in the world um, cool. yeah, but right. but they have 
they offer only three classes who are taught by outside instructors in, in what I would call digital native design. Um, I, none, they're all electives. <laughs> they're not part of their of the uh, core no. curriculum for their for their students, um, and none of their classes are interdepartmental. Uh, none right. of them work with computer science. None of them work with. That's exactly the point, yeah, right? They're not working. They're not even. I mean, they're basically, you know, like an art and design department that is teaching stuff that they were teaching 30 years ago, 40 years ago. <laughs> and I'm like, really? Uh, you I know. know. <laughs> so I know. And what's interesting about that is it multiply that not only nationally but internationally. Yeah. We appreciate all the things that you have done and continue to do for the design and the web professional community, most definitely for your insights on trends today and for your time. Great. Thank you. It's, uh, it's been wonderful speaking with you.